Do you have more than one smartphone, and especially one of them is not being used? Me too. Nowadays, smartphones are not just for calling and texting, they can do much more. Old smartphones can be turned into a digital photo frame, an entertainment center, or a security device, etc. Today, I want to bring a new life to my friend's broken phone, who originally wanted to throw it away as something no longer in use. But, buying a new case, replacing a few broken parts is a familiar formula that most people do when it comes to reviving something, and today, I want to do something different, something like a PC smartphone. Sounds weird, right? Let's get started. In my hand is an iPhone 7 Plus. The screen was broken when he dropped it from above, the case was deformed, but the motherboard was still alive. Despite its small size, it is even more powerful than some of the computers from the 2010s in some respects. After spending a lot of time unscrewing each screw and disassembling the components, here is the motherboard, the most important part. Inside the machine is clean, detailed, very beautiful. Some parts will not be used such as the front camera and rear camera, along with that the speakers and the front microphone will also be removed. One of the problems of the iPhone 7 Plus is that it gets hot, very hot. To solve this problem, I will use this CPU cooling fan because I like its design. The idea is to place two of them side by side, then use a specialized copper heat pipe to conduct heat from the CPU to the copper contact points underneath the fan for cooling. The reason I don't put the fan directly on the motherboard is because first, it is difficult to operate, second, the components may collide with each other causing damage, and third, it is not aesthetic. My plan is to use this PVC plastic tube as the main material. Its advantages are that it is cheap, even free, because most of you have a leftover piece in your house that you have not used for a long time. It is very easy to process. Just cut it out, heat it up, flatten it into a sheet, and do whatever you want on it. The tools I used in this project are also very basic, including a saw which can cut both plastic and metal. A drill, and of course, many drill bits with different diameters. My favorite bit has multiple diameters on the same bit. Sandpaper, a utility knife, and a file to smooth out the cuts. Soldering irons and wire cutters for soldering. For heating, I used my kitchen gas stove, which is very effective but requires some skill to avoid overheating. Okay, now moving on to the main part. I cut a 110 by 140 millimeters PVC sheet. That is the basic sheet. Most of the components will be placed on the sheet. To mark the four positions that need to be drilled for the heatsink fan, first I remove these four plastic screws, replacing them with longer hex screws. As you can see, there are many holes, as well as slots. All of them help to make assembly and connection of components easier. Just mark, drill, mark, Saw, very easy and requires a little carefulness and meticulousness. These are the components that will be attached to the base sheet. First, we will insert this thin flat cable first. This is the cable that connects the motherboard to the lightning port, external speaker, microphone, and Wi-Fi antenna. Normally, in a phone, it will be spread out like this. But because there is not enough space, I decided to bend it 180 degrees backwards through this slot. Similarly with the volume cable and power button. Then, place the motherboard in position and secure it with screws. I deliberately placed it so that there is a gap to help dissipate heat from the power supply on the underside of the motherboard. Now it's time for the most interesting part, the heat sink. When I first bought it, the heat sink copper tube was thin. 
I intended to let it directly contact the CPU like this, and in addition, to fix the two tubes together as a block, I decided to solder them on a 1mm thin copper sheet. After cutting to the desired size, I used my familiar gas stove again. However, a problem arose. Because of overheating, the copper tube changed from its original shape to a circular shape, I think so. I didn't understand why because this is the first time I've been soldering with copper. It looked quite ugly, and since the surface area of contact was now smaller, I reversed it and let the surface of contact directly touch the surface, with the hope that the heat dissipation efficiency would increase. Next, I fixed the heatsink fan on top. Now it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now, it's time for the external speaker, but first, I'll connect the Wi-Fi antenna cable. I'll place it so that the contact points are aligned, and then I'll secure it with screws. For the power button, I'll use this. Do you know what it is? It's a part of the old case that I cut out, because the screws in this position are very small, and I couldn't find a better solution. I'll use duct tape to secure the remaining parts. Now, it looks neater. Now we need a stand. I used two 135 by 90 millimeters PVC sheets stacked on top of each other, with the top piece shorter. In the middle is a gap like a box, which is where I put the power supply. To power my computer, I used old laptop battery cells. With six cells connected in parallel, I hope it will be enough to operate for a few days. To connect to the motherboard, I used the small circuit at the end of the original battery. I just need to cut it out, solder thick wires according to the negative and positive poles. This is a stand unit including the battery pack after being fully assembled. To make it look better, I trimmed the excess power cord and used a dedicated copper connector to transfer power from the bottom to the top. The result is two poles neatly arranged like this. Because both of my poles are now yellow in color, for safety, I carefully mark the negative and positive poles next to them for easy identification later. With the two side panels also cut and drilled with heat sink holes as well as holes for the connection ports. The back panel will have an additional fan to increase air circulation inside. The main panel will be placed on top and linked to the rest. I originally planned to use super glue, but then I changed my mind and chose to connect with screws, as it is beneficial for disassembly later if necessary. This circuit board is taken from a power bank. It has indicator lights and multiple ports for charging. Because the lightning port is no longer suitable, the charging time will be very long if using it. In addition, I can also charge other devices from my own power supply, like a charging station. The task is almost complete. There are a few more details to go. This is the base for the screen. I cut a slot to thread the cable through, and it also goes through the second slot here to connect directly to the motherboard. I spent a lot of time here, because I was afraid that if I used too much force, I would damage the fragile connector cable. Secure it to the front, and the assembly is complete. But wait, before we close it all up, we need to wire up the electrical system first. My cooling fan uses 12V power. So I need a boost circuit to get the desired 12V current. This small board will handle that. After soldering them back together according to the correct positive and negative poles, the result is like this. It looks quite messy, doesn't it? Okay, we have to finish it somehow. Put the top panel on, and now fix the screen in place. Connect the screen cable to the motherboard. The space is only enough for one finger to operate, but that's okay. I can still do it.
This is the back panel. This panel is assembled from many small pieces, so it doesn't look good. So I need a little makeup for it. I use this leftover copper tape from the previous project to cover the joints, and that's it. It looks different, right? Do you wonder how I can turn on and off the power button while the back panel is closed? That's right. I need a key. This one. Let me show you how it works. It will go through this hole, through a bracket, and go straight to the power button. Now I can reach everything I want. And to add some aesthetics, I'll use a real power button that I have from somewhere. And okay, it looks good. After checking everything one last time, I connect the power to the system. The charging circuit wires are also connected directly here. This step must be done with extreme caution, as it is very easy to cause electrical short circuit and unnecessary damage. Finally, let's peel off the protective film. Great. But the front still doesn't look very good, does it? No problem, I've prepared a new mask for it. How is it now? Let's take a quick look at this product. Now is the moment of truth. Press and hold the power button and... Yes, everything is working fine. 